today we're going to go over Amazon Originals Darker Corners collection. This collection's framing is that there's really something to be afraid of in the dark. Of the collections I've read so far, I would say that the Darker Corner collection is way better than the Forward collection. <laughs> Hannah Beast by Jennifer McCohen. I thought this was fine-ish. Like, the idea for this story was okay. But even at 48 pages, it was way too long. I just don't think there was enough interesting things happening in this premise to justify its length. And there was quite a few times where I was very impatient or bored, and I don't think that was the story's intention. It is a story that's being told back and forth in time, like present day, this woman as a mother versus her as a child taking part in this town's tragedy. So there is always like this thing going on in the present that we have to put on pause to talk about the thing in the past. And then putting that on pause as soon as it's getting interesting to be interrupted by something else happening here in the present. So there's that element of it. There's supposed to be like a certain level of frustration and curiosity. But there's a couple of issues with that. First, the thing that's happening present day isn't interesting enough really to hold our attention. So there's never a point in time where I'm like, let's get back to what's happening in present time. I'm only interested in what's happening in the past. And then the other thing, the past is full of a bunch of filler too. I really like empathized with Hannah and where she was coming from, her struggle, but I didn't empathize with her main character who was Hannah's friend slash now currently a mom. I just didn't understand where she was coming from or her motivation or intentions at all. This was a world where everyone is super cruel for no reason. The adults don't ever seem to notice or step in or do anything. And I don't understand the kids' motivations either. Like, without giving any spoilers, I can't give you any examples of this, but I just could not relate to anyone except for Hannah. And she's the girl who gets murdered in the past. And that's not a spoiler because it's right there in the summary of the book. It's also confusing narration wise because we get a lot of the story told from Hannah's point of view but we are going back and forth in time with the mom and the mom's point of view where she is now as an adult versus where she was then as a child she has no way of knowing Hannah's perspective or point of view and if she somehow did know like that she was being abused by her dad and that Hannah was living in like poverty and being hurt and all this other stuff and she still went along with the teasing of Hannah even further removed from something I could relate to. And it's hard for a horror book to scare you if you don't care about what happens to any of the people in it. Still, the overall like beginning, middle, and end, if you told me the sketch of it without looking at the execution, I'd say was effective. I do think weaving back and forth from present to past in this kind of story works well. Just the way that it was pulled off here wasn't as effective as it could have been. And I do like the synchronicity of some elements in the story starting and ending the way it does. Which is why overall I think it's probably three stars for me. I would read something else by this author. But I'm not rushing out the door to find it and I would have a hard time recommending this story to anyone. The Sleep Tight Motel by Lisa Unger. I really liked this one. It was an easy four stars for me. And it was a huge relief to find this one so enjoyable and empathetic and pleasant after the last one that I had read. Because I was a little bit worried about where things were going when we start with something like Cannabis. I knew there was a twist and what the twist would be very early on into reading this story, but I was enjoying the quality of writing, the prose, the way everything was kind of like unfolding and expressing itself so much much that I was just enjoying my time with this story and willing to give it its time and space to breathe and work what it was trying to work. Overall, I thought this was a relatable and slightly melancholy read. I didn't find the supernatural elements of it to be what was the horror part. For me, the horror was in how brutal our day-to-day -day world is and the reality that what happened to this character, short of all the fantasy supernatural parts, is just way too real and happening all the the time and that was like both scary and sad. There's a giant trapdoor spider under your bed by Agar Cantero. 
And this was just awful. It's the worst thing I've read in an Amazon original ever. It's probably one of the worst things I've read, period. I hated this story. First of all, the premise felt incredibly cringe to me. It is about four kids who are sleeping over and playing make-believe. Blurring of lines between reality and make-believe is part of what we're experiencing here in this story. Specifically, all these kids are really into Harry Potter and living at like Hogwarts or some sort of like extended Hogwarts situation. So they're using like the spells and the monsters and all that junk from Harry Potter. I just didn't like that to start. Like if we're gonna do this make-believe blurring the lines kind of thing, I would have loved if we'd made up our own world. I suppose that would have been hard to do in 24 pages, like the references to Harry Potter and not needing to explain all that stuff to an audience in theory, assuming they have read the book. You know, goes a long way to shortening things. But of course that's a problem too, because not everyone has read Harry Potter or is going to read Harry Potter. And I do think overall this particular short story was trying to go for like an absurdist humor more than a horror kind of theme. So that makes it sort of weird in a Darker Corners collection. But the thing that sealed it for me that this story has no place in the Dark Corners anthology is it feels like this story is for children. It's not just that the characters are kids, like the whole premise is a child's premise, talking about like the blurred lines of reality and imagination, the language, the scenario, the way the kids are solving things, the kind of way they're like bickering back and forth. I see this as potentially a pretty decent children's book, but there is no version of this with or without Harry Potter that's a good for adults. And this is a collection meant for adults. So what is this story doing here? I would never in a million years have finished if I wasn't trying to review this entire collection. I like read a couple paragraphs a day and then would just like put it down and stop. It took me like well over a week to finish this book even though it's only 24 pages just because I hated it so much. Yow Dow by Joyce Carol Oates by far my favorite of the collection. It's also one of my favorite reads of the year. If you're looking for more about this, you can check out my favorite reads of the year or my best reads of fourth quarter. Obviously it's a five star read for me and I really enjoyed it. The only thing I'll add in this review I didn't talk about in the others is that I think it's a perfect embodiment of what the Darker Corners collection is looking to do. The there is really something to be afraid of in the dark premise is definitely something I Belt in this story. The Tangled Woods by Emily Roboto. I read this back in 2021 and I gave it four or five stars then. I would still give it four or five stars now. This is a story that left me both rooting for and resenting the main family. Like I wanted them to be successful and to survive and succeed. And at the same time, I sometimes just found myself really annoyed or angry with them. And it was like very interesting to feel these two different extremes in such a small story. This is also another story that involves Harry Potter. But unlike the trapdoor spider story, you could easily turn this into just like a wizard or like medieval themed story and get the same beats without using Harry Potter. So I found the use of Harry Potter significantly less intrusive and offensive in this story than I did in the previous one in the collection. The story's 40 pages and expertly delivered. I really enjoy the prose and the complexities and the shifting mood and sensibilities that you can find in this story. And overall I came out of this thinking that Emily Roboto is a very talented writer and I'm a little bit jealous of the way she weaves things in and out like that. Next is going to be The Remedy by Adam Haslett. The story in this collection I forgot existed until I was writing down all the names in this collection for the script. The story is stupidly forgettable and the prose are really bland and unremarkable. The most charitable take on the messaging of this story is going to be something along the lines of like the dangers of a bad therapist or exploring like an abusive therapeutic technique, which is definitely something we have a chilling history of in medicine in general. But how I read the story made the themes just egregious because it came off to me like an anti-therapy, anti-exploring your emotions and trauma, go ahead, pull yourself up by your 
bootstraps and get over it kind of story. The way they were talking about how everyone had different kinds of trauma and they were all looking for ways to solve it and it was making them like unable to live in day-to-day -day life. Like it just took this tone that made it seem like they were very dismissive of people who wanted to express their emotions and feelings or who wanted to own up to trauma or who wanted to explore mental health. And it also made it feel like they didn't understand the point of therapy or how the therapeutic process is supposed to work. Like all this stuff together, I think it comes back to the fact that our main character is suffering some kind of undiagnosed mental something and they've been doing so their whole life. We don't really see how it impacts their life except that they don't work. So it comes off like very dismissive of this person. The whole message in the end is like an anti-therapy, be a big boy kind of thing, which is disgusting. I should hate this book a lot more than I do just based off of this last impression on the theme that I got. But the truth of the matter is, is the story feels so poorly thought through and like so shallow cash grab, gotta get my name in <laughs> this collection kind of thing. And not like a labor of actual artistry or thought, which is all why it's sitting at a three. Just a whole bunch of nothing. Oak Avenue by Brandy Reed. I'm most mixed on this story out of all the ones that I read. The highs were really high in this and the lows were real low. <laughs> It's a haunted house possession style story which is my favorite in the supernatural horror genre and it's doing a couple of things that I think are unique and kept me wondering where we were going or how this would present. It also has a couple different traditional gothic elements which you know I love in these kind of stories. Our main female lead is both empowered and bold and someone you want to root for and also someone who like feels a little snobbish and entitled and cringe inducing where you're like not 100% confident about how you're supposed to read or perceive her or whether or not how she's acting is appropriate in the moment. And I appreciated that because our uncertainty about that character helps cement our uncertainty about what's happening in the world around her and what the solution is and really about the ambiguous ending as well. Even though I have all this positive feeling and praise for this story, there was something in it that didn't feel quite right and not in an off-kilter horror kind of sense, but like in this sense that kept hanging my mind and saying like, this is wrong or this is bad or you shouldn't like this. And I don't know exactly why or where that comes from, but it did force me to like keep thinking about the story and the characters and the plot beats for a hot minute afterwards. I think it like is dangerously walking the line between like having an abusive couple and making that okay or like justifying it in some way in the narrative, but it doesn't ever go quite as far as to say that the abuse is okay or to even acknowledge that it's abuse, I guess. Overall, I'd say the effect with this story is that it is more of an existential horror than a supernatural horror, even though there's a lot of supernatural elements in it. And that's every book in the Darker Corner collection. I think even though the forward collection is the weaker of the two collections here, there were more authors I wanted to follow and read more of off of the forward collection than in the Darker Corners collection. And I would say that the lows here in the Darker Corner collections are some of the lowest lows I've experienced in all of the Amazon originals so far. Still, it's a fun little thing to pick up, especially if you're looking for a couple spooky stories. They're definitely more on the existential dread than the distracting horror side. And if you guys got to the end of this video, please hit the like button and leave me a ghost emoji in those comments down below. And as always, keep reading. Bye!